Hey guys, this is Shayan and today we are going to interview a CP legend, Umnik. Hi Umnik. Uh, Hello. First of all, is it Umnik or Amnik? Uh, Umnik is the correct pronunciation, but I respond to Amnik. Yeah. <laughs> so it's Umnik. In this interview, we want to discuss in detail that how Umnik became Umnik. We want to talk about your opinion about many things, your advice to the people who are watching you right now. And we're gonna have some fun. So let's get start. First, let's talk a bit about yourself. How old were you when you started competitive programming? That kind of depends on your definition of what competitive programming is. Right. Like, uh, I was uh, interested in mass and uh, like participating in mass competitions since very young age, right. maybe like uh, seven years old. Oh. Uh, but I didn't start uh, coding anything until uh, ninth grade, so I was uh, 15, probably. So you were 15 when you started competitive program, started contest, writing contests? Yes. Right. So how old, do, how old are you right now? I mean, how many years ago? 27 and a half. 27 and a half. Okay, so you're three years older than me. You were you started participating in mathematic competitions in in your young ages. How how you started them? Were you encouraged by your family or your school, or you just started that by yourself? Uh, well, I I think I was encouraged by my family. Yeah, right. uh, the. Uh, found some teachers right. to uh, have some lessons with me, but uh, like I mostly just read uh, books with uh, some interesting math problems. Right. So um, I guess my mom. Uh, her main uh, um, help in that was buying me those books, so that's very helpful. Uh, right. Awesome. So she bought books for you, and you started to read them, and you fell in love with mathematics, and your journey started from there. I guess so. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And when did you start it? Uh, moving to competitive programming. I mean, when, uh, when was this transition from math to programming? Uh, I wouldn't say that like I transitioned from math to competitive programming straight away. Uh, so in uh, in Russia, school has like uh, eleven years, right. and uh, so for first eight years. Um, I was uh, attending, well, not a bad school, but like a, it was um, one of the best schools in my town, but my town was pretty small. Right. Um, and uh, like there were, uh, weren't a lot of like good uh, teachers for my level. Um, but after uh, eighth grade, I... Um, I applied to and then uh, started uh, studying at, um, so it's called uh, right. Special Education, uh, Educational and Scientific Center or something. Um, so it was a school for like for gifted children uh, and I moved to a bigger city and I was living um, like kind of in a dormitory, it's kind of a boarding school. Um, 
kind of similar. So I started living without my family in a dormitory uh, and there were a lot of good teachers, uh, mainly in uh, physics and informatics uh, and also in my new class there were several people who uh, already did competitive programming Mm -hmm. and actually one of my classmates uh, went to uh, IOI and got a gold medal on IOI uh, later so (laughs) it, it Right. Two years later, he went to II and got a gold medal. Uh, and so, like, uh, he was my friend. And uh, from him, like, I kind of started uh, doing some kind of programming. Uh, so I got into, a, like, um, yeah, I, I I had uh, many people around me who were uh, doing something similar, and uh, that's when I started uh, doing it. So I was uh, doing mass uh, Olympiads, physics Olympiads, and oh. uh, informatics at all at the same time. Oh. Uh, yeah, I actually. Um, I advan- like I was mostly doing physics in school. Oh. Um, so so you were um, training for IPH? Oh. Uh, yes, I advanced to uh, IFO from Russia, oh. which is pretty cool. Uh, wow. But I participate. <laughs> you did that last week? Yeah. Why? Uh, it's a weird story. Uh, basically, I, I had uh, like personal differences with uh, team leaders, and oh, so this is this is very interesting. I think very few people know about this. So you advanced to IFO, but you didn't go because you had arguments with the leaders. Uh, well, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Uh, they said that you can't go there. They uh, said that, or you said uh, that, uh, probably. No, I, I, uh, I said that I don't want to go, oh. um, and I didn't. <laughs> right. So what about IOI and IMO? Did you also participate in them? Uh, no, uh, so I wasn't good enough in informatics to go to IRI. Um I, I only, uh, so in, in ninth grade, like the first year I uh, moved to um, this better school, uh, I participated in all Russian Olympiads in right. mathematics and physics. Right. Mm. and got medals in both. Uh, and only in the last year of school, I participated in, in informatics. Um, right. So in the, uh, in the last year, I got medals in all three uh, disciplines. Wow. Uh, but like the, the process of uh, like what is called like training camps for international uh, Olympiads. Uh, they start like after uh, like the previous summer, basically right. uh, one one year before. Yes. Uh, and uh, at that point, I wasn't good enough uh, in informatics, not even close. Um, oh. And uh, like I had to choose between math and physics, and I chose physics. Awesome. So Umnik, who is a legendary grandmaster in code forces now, he didn't advance to IOI, but he advanced to IFO. <laughs> and he didn't go there because of argument with the team leader. That's mind blowing. You know, with what you say, I feel like an incredibly talented people is in front of me, but it is interesting that 
you once said that you don't believe in talent. What do you mean by that? What, can you explain that? Mm, I think that what mm, people mean when they say talent is just hard work that is hidden from their eyes. Right. <laughs> I spent a lot of time uh, guessing good. Like I, I wasn't uh, great at 10 years old. I read books. I spent a lot of time practicing solving problems. Uh, and then I became better and better. Uh, okay. So it was well, the, there might be uh, like some genetical um, thing, but I believe that mostly uh, it uh, like ninety nine percent is hard work for sure, at least ninety nine percent, and like the genetic thing is mainly like. Uh, do you get interested in something? Like, uh, I believe that a lot of people who could be um, like Nutellas, let's say, like legendary grandmasters, right. uh, they just, they're not doing competitive programming because they are doing something else. Like, um, if you take some, uh, I don't know, great historian, or maybe uh, like molecular biologist, right. or like and if if you take a, a person who like was dedicated and become great in some area, if they chose a different area, uh, like when they were ten, maybe they would become great in that area. Right. It just like you, you choose something to do, and then you become better in that. Right. Right, gotcha. so you believe that 99% of it is hard work and talent is, or genetic is at most 1%. So yeah. does that mean that everybody, if trained properly, can become an LGM? I think so, yes. Awesome. So th this is very interesting. Uh, so you said that people who are LGM mostly don't do anything else, they focus on CP? Well, um... Probably not. Like people do something else, but uh, you need to spend a lot of time and dedication to, to become great. Right. Gotcha. Uh, so, with what you say that genetics is not very important, it's about hard work. There are many people who say that they are training a lot and they don't pr progress. They, they, have, they are doing CP for a long time and they don't progress. What's your advice to them? I mean, what do you think they are doing in a wrong way so that it resulted in this? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it, it probably uh, like depends on like uh, every case is special and unique um, but so there is a very great quote from uh, my friend uh, who like you might well you probably don't know you're quite young <laughs> but uh, so th there was a uh, the first user uh, I love Tanya Romanova also known as uh, Libram, right. um, he stopped participating quite a long time ago, right. maybe like uh, five years or something. Um, but like when we discussed um, with him, well, unfortunately, the original quote is in Russian and uh, uh, it is like um, not child friendly, mm. um, but uh, the rough translation is um, like for all the people who say that uh, 
they spend a lot of time and um, <laughs> bust their asses trying to become good at comprehensive programming and have not become good, they are lying in part about assets. Right. Like if you actually spend a lot of time mm -hmm. and energy and uh, like have realistic expectations, right? Uh, you will become good. Like uh, okay, maybe LGM is like maybe that's not for everyone. I don't know, but I am one hundred percent sure that anyone can become red in like five years if they spend en enough energy. Oh, that's bold. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there is a, a question from our Discord server and they ask you that, uh, what topics do I have to cover in order to get to specialist? Um. None. <laughs> Binary research. <laughs> Binary research. But, but I, I think that to get a specialist, you don't know. Uh, you don't need to know anything. Exactly. I also believe the same. It's not about knowing algorithms. It's about implementing many things, solving many problems. I, I also always say that. And there's another thing that uh, initially you were a specialist when you started. Uh, cont uh, starting uh, writing contests in CF. After around two years, you became a red color. So, and you said that everyone can become GM. So what was your practice method in that time? So that uh, people can also do that and maybe they can also reach Grand Master. Um, I, I solved a lot of problems and that, that's it. How, how, lo how long you were uh, solving problems per day or per week? I, I don't remember, but well, basically, um, all my free time. All your free time. Um, so there is a, uh, another great blog by Radovush. Right. Uh, on the like mental mental state you need to, to become great. Right. And the basic idea is that um, to become great, you need to dedicate a part of your brain right. to, to something. And basically, all the time you're thinking about problems. It doesn't mean that you're like sitting with pen and paper and solving problems, but they're always on your mind. And um, Basically, I'm not saying that you need to grind and like make yourself uh, solve problems. Just if you don't want to solve problems right now, don't. Like it, it's okay to not solve anything for for a week, for a month. But uh, if you really like it, then after some time you will miss it, and uh, you will will want to solve more problems. Right. Right. That is, I also agree with that. But especially maybe for people who have limited time, maybe for example, they have to participate in their national Olympiads. They cannot maybe miss a month. I mean, it's, it's not in their hand, their time is limited. That would be a bit bad. Uh. I think it's still more or less true. Like, well, it probably depends on uh, from person to person. It can be different. Uh, but for me, uh, if I don't want to do something, I will probably not benefit from like making myself do it. Mm. You never if, if I want to do it, then uh, I will do it. If I don't want to do it, it probably won't help if I will make myself. Yeah, I remember somebody was saying that willpower is not really that big a deal that people think. I mean, if deep inside you don't, if 
you are really you really have the potential to become good at something deep inside you want to do that you want to keep doing that and many successful people are just obsessed with what they're doing they don't feel like they're going to work or they're doing work they just enjoy what they're doing and they're not forcing themselves to do anything maybe that's very close yep. to what you're saying right now yep yeah Awesome. You were in the top 10 of code sources for a very long time, for maybe five or six years. Did it help you to find a job or a girlfriend? Uh, well, no for girlfriend part. <laughs> okay. uh, I, uh, I did meet my girlfriend on mass competition. Oh. Uh, but that was before I even started doing competitive pressure. Right. Um, for the job part, uh, yes, of course. Like, um, okay, I don't have a job right now. <laughs> um, for um, for more than a year, my job was uh, head admin at CodeChef, so that obviously uh, okay. depended on me being great at competitive programming. Um, and I do have an offer from a company right now that I accepted, but I haven't started working there yet. Right. Uh, and that offer I got like from being great at competitive programming, yes. Right, special. So that gets us to the next question that was asked from you in Code Forces. That is your job or your source of money? Is uh, is CP or uh, you have uh, you are doing it just as a hobby? Uh, it's not easy to answer. Uh, so my source of money right now is my wife, who works as a software engineer. Um, so all the money that I earned right. were connected with competitive programming. Uh, do I consider competitive programming to be a hobby? I don't know. Like, uh, I guess it depends on the definition of a hobby. If like it, it's something that you do, but you're not getting paid for doing it, right. I guess that like, well, I'm not getting paid for participating in contests. Right. I might get prize money for winning in contests. Right. So what is it? <laughs> is, is it a, a job or a hobby or something in between? Yeah. Uh, I just enjoy doing it. I'm not doing it as a job, I'd say, but it is more than a hobby. Mm. Like it, it's um, a lifestyle. I don't know. Right. <laughs> like that, that's it's your life. one one of the defining characteristics of my life. <laughs> oh, part of it is participating in super contests. That's so interesting. That's so interesting. So you have a family. You have a wife. I didn't know that. Do uh, do you also yes, have? I have a wife. Do you also have children or? Uh, I do not have children. I have a dog. Right. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. This is a fun question. If you tell a girl that you're in the top 10 of code forces, is she like impressed or she's like a uh, nerd? Have you ever uh, tried that before? No. <laughs> I mean, uh, 
I have not dated anyone except for my wife for right. many years. <laughs> awesome. So you're a man family. I didn't know that. This is so nice. Awesome. Uh, I, I don't think it will work on like a, a random girl. Like if you uh, find some, some someone on Tinder, for example, and you say that like you're in top 10 on Catfarsis, <laughs> uh, she will probably say what is Catfarsis. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, another person asked in Discord that what's the strategy of problem solving? so that we can improve our problem-solving skill early. This is kind of similar to previous questions, but it is asking about the strategy of problem-solving. Maybe he means problem-solving in practicing, I guess, because he's talking about improving our skills. I don't really know how to answer that. Like, I, I, I don't think that I, I understand the question. Uh, like, for... For many questions like that, I feel like the underlying question that the person wants to ask but doesn't is like, uh, is there a secret trick? Is, is there something uh, that uh, like LGMs know <laughs> and we don't? Um, no, there isn't. <laughs> right. You need, you need to solve a lot of problems. Right. So there's no secret key. There's no way that you can just do that in an easy way. You, you need to do that in the hard way. Practice yes. a lot. Yes. Gosh. Another question that is that if you had a brother or sister, you wanted them to become an LGM in CF, how would you advise them so that they can both grow in CF and love this field? I think you answered it kind of in the previous question, but if you have anything to add about this question. Um, so, well, if I had a sibling uh, and they wanted to do it, there is a very important uh, thing that I uh, I consider that person uh, doing competitive programming and wanting to improve like really enjoys it and they want it um, because it is interesting for them not because like uh, they need to reach some uh, rating like right. to, to put it on a resume or something like for people like that I don't know what. Like, I, I, just, I haven't been in a similar situation, so I cannot apply my experience to that. Right. Uh, I always, like, uh, did, like, math and physics and competitive programming um, because I enjoyed the process. Yeah. Uh, and so, if my uh, imaginary sibling uh, doesn't want to do it, then it's totally normal. It, it is not imperative to love competitive programming. <laughs> like, uh, you can do something else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but if they uh, do want to do it, well, yeah, I would say that Mostly you need to solve problems and just uh, work on your own. But if I would uh, have a sibling, I would probably try to um, like tutor them somehow. Uh, I I am kind of interested in like, um, could I like help someone to uh, to become uh, better in some like, structured way. Right. Um, we will probably never know. Like <laughs> I uh, sometimes 
joke about like I want to have a child so that I can see if I can make them <laughs> great at combat <laughs> program. Um, like because I, I will have control over like big part of their life. Right. And so like I can structure <laughs> uh, how how they uh, train, uh, and I can teach them so that probably would be good. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, I mean that depends a lot on like I cannot control whether uh my imaginary child will love competitive programming if not then there's nothing i can do right i mean probably i can still make them good but by like breaking their life uh that's not something i want to do uh i like that will still require years of training. So, like, even if you have an access to a, like personal tutor twenty four seven, and the tutor is like your parent, and they want to dedicate their whole life in making uh, making you the best competitive program ever. I still think that it will take years, and like I might make it faster, but not by much. Like you, you still need to solve ten thousand problems. Like I don't know, ten thousand is a random number. I I'm not sure if I solve ten thousand problems. I, maybe. Like, I, I think it's somewhere around that. Right. So you have to solve 10,000 like, problems. You to solve some number of problems. <laughs> right, gosh. So you have to, you, what you mean is that anyway they should solve a lot of problems. There's, there's no magic trick in here. Mm-hmm. No magic trick. And I also believe that, I personally believe that in order to reach a massive success, there are two keys, obsession and hard, hard work. That's basically what you said as well. Obsession makes you want that. I mean, if you don't do this, you, you will feel, uh, you know, your, your life doesn't have colors anymore, you know, if, if you don't do that. And that is basically what I'm uh, trying to do. I'm trying to find what I have the obsession for. For example, I have the obsession to do something big, but maybe I don't have the obsession to do many things that other people want to do. And it's important to find your obsession and then work hard in there. And you don't need to force yourself then. You just, you are gonna, per, you are gonna work a lot if you have obsession, if you dream about it. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. So speaking about tutoring, there is a weird question asked in CF. How much do you charge for tutoring? Uh, so I, don't take new students right now because like I, I hope that I will uh, start a new job right. soon enough uh, and so I want to focus on that for for time being and like see how that uh, how it changes my life and well if, if I will have time and energy for uh, a couple of students maybe I will take uh, them um, so the last time I tried to make a, like a business out of tutoring, I set the price as uh, $500 per month, and that includes uh, weekly two-hour lessons. So like uh, eight hours of uh, video lessons, right? Four five hundred dollars. Oh, and this was one on one, you know. I mean, yes, yes. Okay, so for eight hours you would get five one. Yeah, that that's a very good price for someone at your level. Yeah. Yeah, and like uh, my 
goal was to uh, set a price that like is a reasonable con- compensation for me, but I don't want it to be your like, job. Insanely high. Right, right. You don't want to catch. Catch. That's really. First, I thought that you want to say 500 per hour because that's what. That's insane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you are insane as well. You're in the top 10 of the world. You're in. Yeah, like I, I understand that. Uh, well, any price is normal if there are people willing to pay that much yeah yeah and Mark like pr- probably there are people who are willing to pay like a thousand per hour right. to, to have a lesson with me i, I don't think that i want to <laughs> <do this. laughs> right gosh <laughs> yeah the next question If you go back and start competitive programming all from the beginning, is there anything that you would change? I mean, something that you would do in a different way? No. <laughs> <laughs> so your practice method... Um, uh, okay, I, I think that um, I would... Um, So for many years, I didn't use pre-written code. Right. Um, and my uh, like logic behind that was that, like, I'm training mainly for ICPC, and there are no pre-written code on ICPC, so I should not use uh, pre-written code. And um, I mean, that probably helped me in uh, like making sure that uh, I can write some algorithms like without thinking, just on uh, muscle memory, basically. Uh, but I start enjoying contests more when I started using pre-written code because like uh, I didn't need, uh, didn't have to worry about uh, standard stuff which is not that interesting. Mm. I could focus on uh, solving problems. So it harmed the way you liked CP. I mean, it was harming that kind of. Uh, yeah, a bit. Yeah. Not, not by a lot, but... Yeah. So you would change that. Is there anything that you change in more general, I mean, in your life? Maybe you want to start CP again, or maybe you would do IUI instead of IFO, or I don't know. If with this mindset that you have right now, you go back at that time with this knowledge that you have it at this time? I don't know. I, uh, we can't know the consequences of uh, like small changes, like the butterfly effect and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Um, Maybe if I was focused more on like preparing for IOI in school, maybe I would get burned out by competitive programming and wouldn't achieve the level that I did. Mm-hmm. Right. Then. Right. Okay. Interesting. What did you do? on the 4th of December, 2016. Oh, uh, yeah, that's, uh, um, that's a troll question that, uh, okay, so, <laughs> um, I mean, I, did, I don't think that I need to hide it. Um, so in ICPC, 
There is this a, was ICPC this 4th of sep- uh, December 2016? Uh, it was a, a Northern European Regional Contest right. uh, in, in season 2016-2017. Um, it was my first year at Higher School of Economics. Um, so, again, okay, let's uh, start from the beginning. In ICPC, there is uh, an interesting uh, phrase in deciding eligibility. Right. Like, uh, there are a lot of criteria, like you need to uh, participate in at most to fi- uh, not, uh, less than two finals to be eligible, less than five regional contests yeah. and stuff like that. So there are uh, formal criteria, which are, well, they, there are some criteria um, we can like argue about um, Right. Why they are like that? But <laughs> like th- that's uh, that's something like that reasonable people can disagree about. Uh, but they are at least like formal criteria. The first thing um, that like is asked by eligibility tree, what they call, is. Uh, you must be willing and able to participate in world finals. Oh. And both of those verbs, willing and able, are a bit weird. Uh, So, first of all, you might not know if you will be able to participate. Maybe, like... uh, you will be hit by a bus <laughs> yes. before the finals and you're not able to participate. Maybe you, uh, maybe the finals will be in a country that will not uh, give you visa yeah. to enter that country. And that did happen, not to me, but yeah. Yeah. there are cases where people cannot participate because they didn't get visa. Um, and like, did they um, break the rules? Like they participated in regional contest, but they were not able to participate in world finals. So technically, they broke the eligibility rules. Mm. Um, and the villain verb is even weirder here. <laughs> um, like. For most competitions, like, yeah, you are willing to, uh, like, you want to advance to the last stage. But in ICPC, because of other eligibility criteria, you might not want to participate in the finals because you only have two attempts at that. Mm. So, uh, but, but you have five attempts at regional contests. So you might want to yeah. uh, intentionally lose regional contests. Right. Uh, I participated in four re- uh, like regional contests four times. Uh, in 2014, 15, 16, and 19. In 2015, uh, I got first place. In 2019, I got second place. And in 2014 and 16, I was, uh, I'm not sure if I was in the first hundred because I intentionally, uh, like, I did not want to advance to the world finals because, uh, well, I only have two attempts. And uh, so the first, uh, so 2014 was like my first year in university. I participated in a weaker team than I would like to. Right. Like we were, we were trained as a team uh, in which we participate. Like we would participate next year, <laughs> but I participated with different people, and we didn't want to advance. Mm-hmm. Um, but I wasn't really good then. Uh, so 
we would probably not advance even if, if even if I tried my best. Uh, two years later, so <laughs> it, it was a year after we won regional contest and got silver medals on fi- world finals. Um, so we started the contest by um, like for the first. Uh, so basically, um, we did not submit any problems that were solved by anyone in the first hour. Right. So uh, we just ignored five easiest problems. I haven't even read them. Uh, and after that, I, we just uh, tried to, to do our best minus five easiest problems. So that. Uh, like, <laughs> I'm sure that we will not solve enough to, to advance. Right. So this is what happened in 2016. You just yeah. skipped the first po- five problems, the easiest five problems, and you did the... Okay, awesome. And in 2019, you advanced to World Final when you got the second place. What what did happen that in, in World Final? Uh, I am 2020 world final champion. NAC is in late May, I mean North America championship. Last mm-hmm. year, I think Tourist was here in NAC, just as a guest. Mm-hmm. Why you don't come this year to the A? Tourist lives in the US. Tourist lives in the United States. Where? I, I'm not sure in which city, but uh, for the last year or so, I, I'm uh, not sure about the timeline exactly, but uh, approximately for a year, tourist lives in the USA. From, from a year ago? Yeah. Oh, cool. cool that. But you also are a European. You can easily come to US. Uh, no, I cannot. I need a visa to, to come to US. Why? And I, I guess that Europeans don't need visa to come to the US. Well, I, I live in Portugal, but I, I still I am a citizen of Russia. And the, that sucks. <laughs> so you, you are Russian. Yes. Not Ukrainian. No. But why in your CF you you wrote that you're from Ukraine? Uh, because Russia sucks, and uh, uh, I support Ukraine. I don't want to represent Russia. So, so you feel that you don't want to represent Russia, and that's why you write Ukraine. Why? Because. Because of the political issues or anything else? Well, uh, I didn't want to represent Russia for a long time. And for many years, uh, I didn't have any country set. Right. Look at the verses. Like, you can probably find some old screenshots where like I, I don't have a flag near my handle, um, and uh, like it, it's interesting that um, like you cannot set uh, just the city you represent. And the first is you need to like you can set a country but not set a city, but you cannot. Like just set the city and not the country. Uh, so like I uh, like I have nothing against um, like any particular city in Russia in which I lived. So like I lived in uh, Novorosk where I was born, then in Yekaterinburg, then in Moscow, and in Nizhny Novgorod. And like uh, I don't have anything against any particular city. Uh, and like, if I would be able to represent like a city, but not the country, I would be okay with that. But I can't, so I couldn't set my uh, like the city I, I'm residing uh, in uh, because I don't didn't want to represent Russia. Uh, then in 
in March of 2021, I moved to Ukraine. Um, so my wife is from Ukraine and um, we, we moved to her hometown. Right. Uh, and after that, like, uh, I asked the local community if they're okay with me uh, like setting on catharsis that, like, uh, I live there now. Um, and b- by... Um, as a consequence of that, I would I would represent Ukraine, and they said that they are okay. I don't know if uh, that's still true. Maybe not. Um, but well, I, I I will keep it for now. Right. So you are. I I was always thinking that you're Ukrainian because of no. that's why. But it is really interesting. So, it was there something in particular that you had problem with in Russia that you don't want to represent Russia? Pretty much every Russian government does, yes. Right. Okay, I respect it. Anyway, because... I guess that uh, this is something from deep of your heart, anything that it is. I, I don't want to get into details because I don't want to uh, talk about politics a lot. And this is not uh, maybe good for our community, but I respect that. Another question from Code Forces, how to cope with failure? If only I knew. <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, it, it's okay to be sad for a while. Mm-hmm. It's it's okay to be angry, but um, after some time, you just need to get up and try again. <laughs> At some point, you have to get up and try again. That's, that's important. So another question, is it possible to reach red without having a coach? Yes. How exactly? Just solve the problem. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And maybe you have to read some things. From where do you read things? I mean, from where do you learn things? from maybe Yusaku guides or, guide, or from Code Forces editorials? Um, so, there are a bunch of uh, sources where you can learn stuff. For... Um, in most cases, I would say that you don't need to learn anything. <laughs> like it, it, it is not about knowing stuff. It's about uh, having experience and like recognizing patterns. Yeah, but uh, there are uh, some but, basic things like, for example, DFS. Yes. You need to learn DFS. For yes. Example. Uh, there are some algorithms and data structures and methods that you need to learn. Uh, so I don't think it's a good idea to just like uh, take a book or like well Yusaku guide and just read it uh, from start to finish. I don't think that's uh, yeah, a good way to, to, to learn stuff. Like, I think again more natural uh, way is cool. to yeah. uh, just well, solve problems, but uh, at some point, like you will encounter a problem that you can't solve. And it is very nice if you have, uh, if you know someone who is uh, better than you, um, 
I mean, in Cabazzo's program, not, not in, in life. Uh, <laughs> don't be like a better person in every uh, Someone who has more experience uh, and like you can ask, like, do I need to, to know anything specific to solve this problem? And uh, they can answer uh, yes or no. And if the answer is yes, they can like say, okay, you, you need to um, read about uh, like GFS or like mm -hmm. second stream. And they can like send you some links or uh, usually just uh, knowing the name yeah, of that's algorithm uh, is enough. You can then just Google it. Yeah. There are a lot of uh, good sources. Uh, so there is um, CP algorithms. Um, there is Yusaka guide. Uh, there are like books, like computer programmer had books or something. And maybe uh, in two years there is gonna be my channel. Maybe by then I have covered all the topics. Yeah. <laughs> By maybe even sooner than two years, maybe by six months, I hope. I hope that I can cover all the topics and it is going to be free and accessible for everyone. Well, you have a lot of work yeah. <laughs> uh, to do, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sh should be poss possible. Yeah. <laughs> So you believe that there's no need to have a coach. You just start solving problems. When you are stuck at a problem, you just ask someone that, do I need to know an algorithm or not? And if they say yes, no, that algorithm, you just go read it all. Today, I have a stream. Uh, I, have a, I had a stream for a contest solution discussion. And I said the exact same thing. I said that you don't need to learn the algorithms until you encounter a problem that needs that algorithm. I mean, don't go and start an algorithm until wait. Uh, uh, this was after uh, education, the educational contest today that I streamed. I said that wait, whenever you saw a problem that needs the algorithm, then go learn the algorithm. Some people yeah, and, like and even even better if like you need to uh, spend some time on the problem and like understand why what you knew before is not enough. Mm -hmm. And then when you read about this new technique, you will understand like what are the applications, like what you, you can do now that you can, could not do before. Exactly. And therefore you will, you will not just read an algorithm and like see how it is used. You will already have like a, a problem that uh, yeah. You couldn't solve before knowing that algorithm, and now you can, mm -hmm. and that's that's amazing. Like it, now you you didn't just learn some algorithm; you uh, learn how to solve one more problem that you couldn't solve before. Some people believe that okay, I should like how people learn biology or some other thing. They should just start reading a book, read all the algorithms topic by topic and then start problem solving. Well, that sucks. <laughs> That's the worst way to learn component yes. programming. <laughs> don't do that. Yeah. Why we don't see a lot of girls doing competitive programming and how can we fix that? Uh, that's a good question. I don't have a good answer for it. Um, so uh, I think that uh, the situation is getting better slowly, uh, but it, it doesn't mean that like we should just wait and, and not do anything. We, uh, we have to change something. Um, and well, as I said uh, before, I think that um, every person basically chooses something they want to do and then 
get better and better in that area. And so the problem is that um, not many girls are choosing to yeah. to become uh, great at math or competitive programming. Uh, but well, I say that it's their choice, and it is true to some extent. But there are external factors. There are parents. There are teachers in school. Like th- there are um, some um, older people who have a lot of influence on mm-hmm. uh, children, and they can like uh, consciously or subconsciously. Uh, yeah, destroy it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, like lead a, a child to something. And I, I feel that um, like mass and tech related fields are uh, considered like for boys. Mm. And uh, for girls, it's more like. Um, I don't know, social sciences, arts. Um, but why? <laughs> it, it, is, it, it is just like uh, we as a society decided that that's the way. I don't think there are any like right. reasons for it. Uh, but it like it's it's hard to deny that it is how it is now. Right. Um, I don't think that should be the case. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, but like to to change it, we'll need to. Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll need to change a lot. Like we we need to change how we uh, look at gender roles. Uh, and like how different cultures do that uh, I don't think there is like an easy solution right. uh, and I, I don't think that I personally can do a lot uh, in that regard like uh, basically every future parent or like uh, yeah, a parent with young children uh, they need to right. be conscious about that and not uh, push their children in some predefined uh, categories that they see as socially correct ones Uh but like that still will happen. Mm. So, you think there are some external factors that affect the way girls are thinking, and now they have this belief that okay, these fields are for boys, and they're they're demotivated to enter this field, and they don't choose to enter this field anymore. Is it is it like this? I mean, is it the reason that they don't choose to be a programmer or a mathematician? I, I, I think it's mm, it's worse than that. Like, it's uh, it's not their choice. I mean, it is their choice to some extent, but uh, we kind of force them to choose something mm. else. Right by like saying that okay like socially it's better if you do uh, like arts mm. it's and more social like linguistics right and and we can like um Well, I mean, there are examples where parent can, parents can just say, uh, no, you will be a lawyer, and th- that's it. Like, you, you have to. Uh, but it doesn't have to be that, uh, like, st- 
straight and clear. It can be just, um, well, which books are you buying for your children? Mm. Uh, like what what kind of information are they um, have access to? Right. So basically, I personally believe that it's now if we want it or if we don't want it anyways this is kind of our responsibility to try to somehow not fixing this but making it better than before i mean if we can do something small even small at our own extent to make this better to solve this issue i mean if we don't do that who does that you know what um, unfortunately, I don't think that. Well, it, it's just my opinion. Uh, I might be wrong. Maybe it can be done like just a, a big campaign from competitive programming community to attract more uh, girls to do uh, mass and then programming. Um, but I think that um, we need to change like society attitude and uh, every person can like uh, can do something about maybe like 10 people that are like close friends. Right. Uh, and uh, like uh, where you can change how people see gender roles and like maybe when they will become parents they will not push like boys into being programmers and girls into being lawyers uh, maybe uh, maybe they will do it the other way around which is also not great mm. uh, yeah. just sure. like show your children what what is there and let them decide what is interesting for them and like after several generations <laughs> the uh, gender ratio should be like minimized but it, it will take a lot a long time um, or maybe I'm just pessimistic about that um, so you believe that it's a lot bigger than you think society should change we cannot do anything in in the field of competitive programming society we can, we can do something but it, it won't be enough it won't be enough yeah yeah I agree I agree. Compl I completely agree that with that we can do something, but that won't be enough. So, what is your goal for the future? Do you have the plan to become in the f be in the first place of good forces, for example? I already were first place of good forces. Uh, you were in the first place for how? Uh, for a couple of weeks in 2018. Uh, <laughs> Do you have uh, to get back there and stay there? Like, it, it, it's not my choice. Like, I cannot just say, uh, right. okay, let, let's grind and be awesome. the best. Um, that was a very important thing that you said, yeah. That it's not uh, your choice. Mm -hmm. But doing yeah. the training is your choice. Uh, true. And I do not <laughs> do the training. Yeah. I I don't have the... Um, boom, boom. I'm, I'm not willing to do uh, right. to do the work to, to become uh, much better. Uh, I I enjoy solving problems. I enjoy participating in contests. Uh, I 
But even more, I enjoy participating in uh, team contests. And so I plan to continue to do that. Uh, like solve problems, participate in uh, like Universal Cup, um, which is the main team competition for me now, and uh, participate in uh, like Kid Forces and Quarter Rounds when I can. Uh, but I like I do it for fun. Right, gosh. So, by the way, uh, why do you th why do you think Tourist is not in the top ten of Cod Horses anymore? I think now he is back. I mean, but he, he, he is back. Yeah. Yeah, but for a relatively long time he wasn't in top ten. But and still he's not on top. We are used to seeing him at top. Uh, it's it's random. First of all, um, he, I asked him. He uh, he says that well, yes, something is wrong. Um, and well, as I said, like uh, relatively um, not long ago, he moved to US. And uh, so, the, like, it changed a lot, probably, in how he uh, lives day to day. Uh, plus, uh, for him, the first rounds are now uh, very early in the morning. Yeah, I, I don't know exactly. if he lives on the west coast or east coast. Yeah. But in, in any way, <laughs> yeah, it's, like, in the it's, morning, it's yeah. quite early. Yeah. So that's a factor, obviously. Uh, so it, like he probably cannot participate in his like top form. Um, right. Maybe something else uh, is happening. Um, maybe he's like I, I I don't actually know like if he's working or um, what is he doing like uh, every day so maybe uh, he don't have uh, as much energy as he had before mm -hmm. um, something changed we don't know exactly right yes. um so there's some reason. I, I still, I still yeah. think that the, like he is probably the greatest uh, competitor right now. Like uh, he's certainly the greatest ever. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I agree. I still think that he is the greatest right now. Like it, if you uh, like made, uh, if you made me. Uh, bet on someone to win the next the first round I will bet on Tourist mm. right so it's also random as well so he's still the best but in this past contest he wasn't in his good his best shape and it takes a bit of time for him to get used to the new situation new condition yeah. maybe we don't know yeah <laughs> <laughs> We can see that something is off, mm. uh, and I mean, he can feel that something is off. Uh, maybe he will fix it. I don't know. Right, right, yes. Uh, in the middle of a Div 3 contest recently, uh, you uploaded a screencast to YouTube yeah. in the middle of a contest. So, can you tell us what exactly happened? Uh, I mean, when I record screencasts of uh, like second division or third division contests, right. that uh, I, I usually finish uh, a lot earlier than the end of the round. Uh, I 
I start I start uploading on YouTube and like in in the end you need to like choose whether to publish it now or uh, yeah. like choose the time and I just blacked out and forgot to do that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the, well it uh, it sucked like uh, I but there is nothing I could do like when I. Um, learned about it. Um, there were even like um, so. I uh, set like the uploading on YouTube, uh, and then I just closed the laptop and uh, like started doing something else. I don't remember uh, now, but uh, so I wasn't even uh, online right. um, when it was published, and then. Um, then I, I saw a message from uh, Mike. Oh, <laughs> uh, like, so Mike so, personal message you. Yeah, Mike personal message me, <laughs> uh, and uh, like, so people are saying that you posted like a video, <laughs> and I was like, oh fuck. <laughs> 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 uh, and and then like I I went and uh, like hidden the video, and then I realized that uh, the contest is over now. <laughs> so like I I, uh, I didn't even know when the end was. So like I I uploaded the uh, the video, closed the laptop, then I saw a notification that I have a message from Mike. Uh, I read it and I was like, oh, oh fuck, I need to fix that. <laughs> so I went to and hidden the video and then, uh, oh, it, the contest ended. And people were like, oh, he hidden the video, he wants to hide, like, uh, <laughs> his mistake. No, I, I, just, I didn't even know, like, if the contest is still going. When I understood that the contest is over now, I, like, yeah. uh, returned the video to the open state and uh, wrote like a blog with uh, apology. Uh, well, it, it was a fuck up, uh, but like I, I there, was, there was nothing I could do <laughs> then. I, I could just apologize and uh, well, yeah, it, it was yeah. a fuck up. Yeah. You know, from outside, you look like a very badass person. But when I meet you, you know, closely, you have a very lovely character. I mean, you, you feel like, you, it's, it feels like for me, the, what, the way you talk about people, the way about the opinion that you have about everything, feels like you're very emotional. I, I didn't know this aspect of you. Um. I guess I, um, I have a kind of persona on the internet. Um, it it is me and it's not me. Like, and, um, I'm, uh, I'm not saying that like I play some some role. Uh, it's just. Um, when it is in uh, in writing, I might ca came up uh, as like cold and right. not caring. Um, it might be connected to the uh, disputed fact that. Uh, so I, I think that I'm autistic. I'm not formally diagnosed, um, so but like so I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that I'm autistic. And uh, you are so pretty sure that you're autistic? Yeah. Why? Um, well, there are like diagnostic tests that oh. <laughs> determine that kind of thing. Um, so You're like not I, a, I, for example a social person that much uh, yeah I'm, I'm not <laughs> um, and 
like I I kind of lack um, social norms. I would say that uh, like basically uh, there are some rules in society that are just uh, like accepted. And I don't give a fuck about that. Um, if I don't understand why the rule exists, you don't. I care. might ignore it. <laughs> uh, and uh, like there is kind of uh, people expect you to be polite. And polite means well. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't understand what polite is. I don't think in such categories. Uh, and uh, well, I guess I'm not polite. It it's just not something I try to do when um, I'm talking on the internet or off the internet. But when it is in uh, on the internet. And in writing, uh, like it may seem that I'm just super rude. Right. Okay, <laughs> I, I don't care. Right. Because you don't believe that you you shouldn't not be like. That. I mean, you don't understand that why people want you to not be like that. So you don't care. Is it like that? Uh, yeah, like I, I, I just, uh, I don't see uh, like being polite as a communication goal. My, my communication goal is to, um, like, I have an opinion. I want to uh, communicate that opinion. Mm. Uh, that's it. <laughs> I always ask people in our community that who they want me to interview next. Now I just want to ask it from you as well. Is there anyone that you think it would be interesting that I will interview next? Is there anyone that you invite to be the interview for the next time? If you want to only name one person, just one person, who is going to be that person? Um, And I think that yeah. Radovush is very interesting. Radovush, yeah. yes. Yeah, I also believe that Radovush is very interesting. Yeah. Are you are you a friend with Radovush? Are you friends? No, no, you don't. But we but don't you, interact outside of Kisfars. Right. But it, you like his personality. Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just think that it, it is... Uh, I think he has interesting opinions. Mm. Awesome. Yeah. That would be really cool. Yeah. Definitely. This was really a great interview. I really enjoyed this a lot. Thank you very much for having the time. And I, I really hope that I can be in touch with you, keep in touch with you in the future. You are really a great person. I, I really say that from the deep of my heart. Thanks. Thank you very much. So I guess I'll, I'll see you next time. I think we still can have plans on the channel and we will, we will I will see you next time so True. we will still do things together so goodbye for now. thank you very much. Bye. thanks for having me on this interview yeah